are fear, doubt, and uncertainty kicking your butt? Well, in this video, I'm going to share my strategies for developing the no doubt mindset that turned my life around from being a drug addict facing 12 years of prison. Now, I don't expect you to understand how dire my situation was. What I want you to know, though, is that you can change your situation now. You absolutely can make life happen every day. And I'm going to teach you how in this video. Now, if what I say is in this video connects with you, I'm going to give you a free gift to help you implement the first step in this life transforming process. For those of you who don't know, my name is Fortune. I'm the author of three books and a self-publishing strategist for established coaches and consultants who want to write a book and use that book to grow their business. I've created a proprietary method of getting your book out of your head in less than four hours using a phone and a few websites. This show teaches you how to do that and build the sales funnels to turn your leads into clients and customers. Remember, you're only one book away from a breakthrough in your life or business. So let's talk about your thought fortune. I've been watching a series, y'all, with my daughter on the Discovery Channel called Supernatural. The show spotlights behaviors and the skills it takes to perform some of the most miraculous feats in the animal world. It's from all over the world. In the first episode, the narrator describes the phantom of the forest. It's the goshawk, and it can go from zero to 40 miles per hour in under a second. But it hunts in Canadian forest flying low to the ground. Yet, the other creatures in the forest alert each other to the predatory bird's presence. Smaller birds they will send out these alarm chirps, and animals scatter and scurry for safety. They communicate with each other even though they're different species. Now, there's another segment about squirrels. Because of the temperatures up north, these squirrels can, can't stay out in their homes for long. They, they have to brave the weather and dangers lurking in the trees that prevent them, to prevent them from starving themselves enough. They gotta go get this food. But running up and down trees takes up too much energy. Energy, they don't have to spare, so they fly. Extra skin between their front and hind legs allows them to soar for hundreds of feet, which conserves their energy. And they're doing this at night because it's safer. They have large eyes, y'all, that help them see in the darkness as clearly as we see in the daytime. But the problem is the darkness makes it harder to get home at night. So they use another tool, high-pitched squeals that other flying squirrels can hear. They use the squeals to find each other in the darkness and head back home being careful not to fly into each other because of fluorescent shine that off their bellies that the moonlight gives. <laughs> it's amazing, right? I got one more for you. Burrowing owls live out in the open and they make their homes underground. Their eyesight and hearing is so good that they can see and hear insects dozens of feet away. That's where they hunt. Their fantastic eyesight and hearing also helps them see potential dangers well before the danger gets close enough to them. But bison roam the same land as these burrowing owls. And when they come around, the owls go underground to hide. They're usually safe in their burrows until the bison pass. But sometimes a bison roll around on the ground taking dust baths, which could be dangerous for the birds. So the baby birds hiss like a rattlesnake, warning someone to stay back. And they keep doing it until the bison stands up and walks away, attempting not to get bitten by the rattlesnake it thinks it hears. Now, I mentioned these fascinating abilities to say this. If God would give all these animals the gifts they need to survive, don't you think he gave you all you needed to? <laughs> the thing is, you have this big old free frontal cortex that gets in the way of all your natural programming. Because you can think, you can think your way out of stuff and think your way into it also. And sometimes we can get so good at thinking and thought that we believe it. Whether the true or false, you will believe it if you think about it long enough. Even if the thoughts you've been thinking weren't your own thoughts, 
They might have been planted in your head by someone else who might or might not have had your best interests in mind. Now, you question yourself more than natural because of it. Fear, doubt, and uncertainty hover around you like unwanted guests. Fear causes you to miss opportunities that God placed in your life. And fear steps between you and your future, clouding your head with anxiety. Self-doubt that self -doubt talks you out of trying again and misinterpreting mistakes and failures. And its voice is so loud and convincing, it drowns out all the positivity you had. Uncertainty stops you from leaving people, places, and things that are detrimental to your life. It's so strong that it pushes and pulls you wherever it wants to go. But, catch this phrase. I picked it up the other day in a book called Three Feet from Gold. Success is your reward for setbacks. <laughs> what do you think about that? Hold off judging that statement for a second. Just let it breathe for a second. <sighs> On the other side of your setbacks is a reward called success. But it's up to you to get your reward. So if you feel like your life has been one giant setback, like from birth you were already set back, Go get your reward. If you face setback after setback, building your business, failed launches, going into debt, inability to do admin work, go get your reward. If stinking thinking set you back in your relationships or led to a failed marriage, go get your reward. If the people in your life have been the source of your setbacks, go get your reward. If drugs an addiction or your setback, go get your reward. How, you ask? Align your attitude, beliefs, and commitments to your personal mission. Now, a personal mission is a combination of your passion and talents. Your attitudes can be, here's what I'm going to say. Your attitudes, I'm going to give you some steps right now. I'm going to break these down because I was just going to go through them and I want to make sure I break them down so you have some actual tools to walk away from this video with, okay? Your personal mission is a combination of your passion and talents. What that means is in order for you to define what your personal mission is in your life and stop worrying about the purpose, I want you to make a list of the things you're passionate about doing, things that bring you joy. And I also want to make you a separate list of your things that you're gifted at, talents that you have. And don't tell me you didn't have any talents because I just gave you a whole list of animals out in the world that have talents. God gave you gifts also. I don't care if their gift is just for you to be able to clean real well. I don't care if your gift is your ability to listen to people. I don't care if your gift is being able to paint walls extremely well. I don't care what your gift is. God gave you a gift, some type of talent that maybe you've told people about, maybe you didn't tell people about. I don't care. You don't have to tell me. Make a list of your talents. And then what you're going to do is whittle down those lists, compare those two lists, and get them down narrow to the things that kind of, it's like, I like this, I like that. And see where they something connects. In there, you will find a personal mission that combines the, something you're passionate about and something you're talented with. And if you can get paid to do it, that's even better. But find that connection and start doing that thing. Okay? Personal mission is number one. Next, you want to improve your attitude. Get the right attitude for you to be able to get to your personal mission, to achieve your personal mission in life. Now, the way I talk about uh, attitude is I want you to get real growth every day. Real growth. R-E-A-L. Read something positive or uplifting or inspirational or that's full of value to help you learn how to do the, your passion or talents to achieve your personal mission, something that's going to increase your ability to do those things, okay? Or to change your mindset to something, to a mind of success or to a mind of achievement, something that's going to get you moving forward. Read something every day. It can be as little as five minutes a day reading something that pushes your life forward. Energize. 
Energize comes from two, you're going to get the fuel into your body. How are you going to increase the energy that you have? And you've got two types of energy. One energy is coming from your breath. Your breath improves your ability to think in your mind. So you want to start doing some deep breathy breathing, some meditation, things of that nature to increase your ability to think well and clear your mind so you can focus. That is one energy, that, that spiritual and internal energy. Then you have your physical energy. Get some exercise or just move your body more. Doesn't have to be strenuous all the time. Get your heart rate up. Just doing that actually is going to improve all of the other things that you do in your life. Exercise is a keystone habit, meaning when you exercise, you improve all the other things that you do in your life. Don't test me on that. Just test me on it, okay? Don't judge it. Just test me on it. Seven minutes a day is good enough to get started. Seven minutes a day is enough to get started. I'm going to say it again. Seven minutes a day is enough to get started with, with exercise. Okay, so we have read. We have energized. Then we have the A, which is associate. Associate means to go out and get around people that are doing things positive. People that are doing the things that you want to do, that are kind of similar to your personal mission. Get around these people that are actually doing something productive with their life. The people around you are influencing you whether you know they are or not. They're influencing you. They're either holding you down or they're pushing you up. Get around more people that will push you up. If that also means to start going to events that will help you achieve your personal mission, that will put you around people that bring you joy. You don't have to be happy all the time. Get some joy. You can just find some people that bring push you up and get you joy. You are changing your life. The L stands for listen. Okay? Listen is about Watching these videos, you're listening right now. Getting listening might be to podcasts. Listening might be to audiobooks. You want to listen to positive speaking. People who are speaking life into you. That might mean you go to some uh, a, a presenter that's going to talk to you about how to be better at doing you. Some of the best people in the world, as far as their being able to. Uh, become their best self. People who have stepped into the best versions of themselves and continue to grow have coaches that they listen to, have mentors that they listen to. Are you listening enough or are you doing a lot of talking and a lot of complaining? Stop with the complaining. Start doing more listening to what can help you improve your station in life. That is your attitude. These things, real growth every day, read, energize, associate, and listen will change your attitude to one of growth so that you no longer think you're stuck where you are. A growth mindset means you're going, means you're going to push through the stresses and challenges. You're going to push through the setbacks in your life. Build some resilience because you can always change where you are. You can become better. You can become more of the person God designed you to be by pushing through it with a growth mindset. Okay. The next one is belief. Remember, we're aligning your personal mission, aligning your attitudes, your beliefs, and your commitments towards a personal mission. So beliefs. Beliefs, I want you to make a habit of acknowledging your wins. Big, small, in between, those two. Acknowledge your wins. That might mean writing them down in your journal. Documenting them somewhere so that you have a power bank, what I call a power bank, to go back to and remind yourself sometimes when you're feeling some type of way, when you're getting into your feelings, when those negative voices start coming back, when fear, doubt, and uncertainty show their face and start trying to take over your life again. You can look back into your power bank and read some things that you accomplished to build back up your own self-confidence, to build your self-belief of, I did that, I can do this. I can push, I push through that situation, I can push through this, uh, uh, this situation right now. Build that power bank, acknowledge your wins, and also do this. I want you to start building your belief and power greater than yourself. You can call it whatever you want to, God, light, universe, energy, the glue, G-L-U-E, see what I did there? The glue that holds all this thing the, together is a power greater than you. I choose to call the power God. But start connecting with God by doing this. Speak to God. That means to meditate on things you're grateful for. 
That is as simple as writing it down every day or just saying two, three, a handful of things that you're grateful for. The research is through the roof on how much just acknowledging the things you're grateful for changes the way your brain works. It makes you more positive, one, and it gives you more resilience, two, and it makes you have more life satisfaction. And with life satisfaction, you start seeing more positive things in your life to want to continue moving forward. <laughs> you believe that you can do the things that you want to do. Work on speaking to God by meditating on things you're grateful for and saying them out loud. I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful for that. Thank you. And move on with your day. Number two, think about how God would have you act in your moment. Would God want you to be fearful? Would God want you to be anxious? Would God want you to be doubting yourself? Would God want you to be moving in uncertainty? The answer is no. That is not of the energy and the love from the universe and the, the world that is not created from that fear, doubt, and uncertainty. It's about you pushing through and courage. It's about you believing in yourself that you can do the things that were put on your head. They weren't put in your head for no reason. Those visions came to you because you can do them. The word desire comes from uh, a combination of D-E, meaning of, sire meaning father. So your desires are of the father. And your father, like any good father, uh, any fa good father would do, is going to give you the things that you want. So what's of the father is always good, or of the universe, of the God, of the light, of the energy, is your desire. They're given to you because they're for you. Go after them. Think about how God would want you to act in that moment and make some adjustments when it comes to the fear, doubt, and uncertainty coming up. How God would you act? Do that. Number three, ask for forgiveness of your faults. This is something I do regularly. I make mistakes regularly. I'm, not, I'm saying this stuff to y'all because I'm still a work in progress. You know, I still have times where I have to remember to live with no doubt. That's why I wear my, my own clothing so much to remind myself and to remind other people that I am living my day in the way that God would want me to live it. Because sometimes I can get into fear, I can get into uncertainty, I can get into doubt. And because of those things, I act out of alignment with where I'm supposed to be doing in this world. I don't show up in my life the way I would like to show up. I don't do the things for other people. I don't serve. Yes, I'm not a servant leader in those moments when I'm not, when I'm acting out of fear, doubt, and uncertainty. And I have to ask for forgiveness. I might act out of anger because of fear, doubt, and uncertainty. I might act out of selfishness because of fear, doubt, and uncertainty. I might be inconsiderate out of fear, doubt, and uncertainty. I have to change those things and ask for forgiveness from my spiritual father. Number four, be quick to offer forgiveness to others' faults. See, when I hold on to the pains that people have put on top of me, I am holding on to something that's going to continue to destroy me. Now, forgiveness does not mean you've forgotten that something's happened to you. It means I'm not going to hold on to it and allow this to destroy me spiritually, emotionally, or mentally. I'm not going to let you keep doing it. I forgive you for being who you are. If a, So here's the idea. If, if a dog is barking and snapping at you like it wants to bite you, and you walk up on that, on that dog and it bites you, why would you be mad at the dog for doing what it's already told you it was going to do? I, I, like, I used to say this. I trust everyone to be who they are. So if I know someone is abusive, and they abuse me, I, I, I trust them to be that. I forgive you for being who you are, but it's my fault for being in there, because staying in there. If I know someone is a thief, and I allow them to put myself in a situation where I can be things can be stolen from me, I forgive you for being who you are. I just can't be around you for no more. I'm moving on. Think about how powerful that is. Not holding on to the pains that people have put on you, but changing your situation to protect yourself. Get smarter about this situation and change, okay? Be quick to offer forgiveness for others. Doesn't mean you have to forget. It means you change and adjust. Number five, pray ceaselessly in the good times. There's so many times where 
I myself, and I've known other people say the same thing. They've agreed that they don't necessarily pray when things are going all right. They just kind of move through the day. La, 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 la. But when things are hitting the fan, they get into the prayer closet and they're on the knees constantly praying, God, give me help. God, help me do this. If you help me through this situation. And they only leaning on God or their higher power when things get bad. Like, I don't need you. I don't want to recognize you when things are going good. And which means more than likely you feel like it's all you. But yet when things get bad, I need God's help. Well, I want you to get into a habit of praying during the bad times and the good times, knowing that all things are coming to help you become better who you are. Okay, remember, your success is a reward for your setback. So all those things that seem bad are actually setting you up for some type of success. You got to go get your reward. Remember that. Pray during the good times is a great way to constantly be in prayer. And therefore, you're constantly remembering who you are and whose you are. And therefore, your self-belief is going to grow because you are a child of God. Remember that. Beliefs. Now, we talked about personal mission, attitude, beliefs. Now, we're finishing with commitments. Commitments. I want you to do this. Build habits that reconstruct your identity. Here's what I mean. You are only going to do the things that you believe you can do. And the thing you believe you can do creates your identity. If you believe, if you believe you can write and you identify as a writer, then you're going to write. If you believe you are a speaker and you identify as a speaker, then you are going to speak. If you believe you are a great mother and you identify as a mother, then you will do mothering things. So those two are very connected. So if I can, if you reconstruct the identity to the one that helps you achieve your personal mission, you will start building habits that will help you achieve your personal mission by default. I don't have to think about writing because I identify as a writer, so I do writing stuff. <laughs> when I play sports as uh, in college, I identified as a baseball player, so I went to practice, I swung the bat, I thought about baseball, I did all types of baseball stuff often. What is your identity? Do you know it or is it working off a default of what the world told you you were? We need to restructure, reconstruct your identity. Because take this down. Here's a note for you to remember. Faith is commitment's cousin. Faith is commitment's cousin. What, that, what does that mean? The things you commit to, we can start creating habits around so that you start doing them regularly. Those become things you are committed to. And because faith and commitment are cousins... You are going to, you are committing to things that you have faith will get you to your personal mission. I don't know if I need to, I can't break that down right now. I'm going to keep moving forward. Faith is commitment's cousin. The next thing I want you to, the idea here is I dare you to face your fears. And of course, dare is another acronym. I double, matter of fact, I double dog dare you to face your fears. Did you know the difference between a real experience and a dream? It's action. And that's exactly what DARE stands for. Take action so you can connect your dreams with your real experiences. D-A-R-E. Your real experiences are connected to your dreams by taking action. I double dog dare you to face your fears. Today. That is true commitment. When you're taking action on your dreams so that you can be, they can become real experiences in spite of the fears you're pushing through, in, fight, in spite of the uncertainty you're pushing through, in spite of the doubt you're pushing through. Remind that. I do, fortune, double dog dare me. I got to do it. <laughs> Final point here under commitments. What you track makes an impact. If you are trying to change your identity to one that helps you be, to achieve your personal mission, 
The things that you're tracking in your journal, online, or wherever you want to track it are helping you to see the transformation that you are making. To help you see who you are becoming, you need to know what you have done so you see how you need, where you need to make adjustments or where you need to keep doing something. If you are mindlessly going through your day with some, or your, and your weeks and your months doing the same old thing and not knowing how it's affecting your life, you could be going in the wrong direction and never know. What you track makes an impact. So track the habits and see how those habits are affecting your growth and helping you get to or moving you away from your personal mission. What you track makes an impact. That is another form of commitment. It's going to reinforce your ability to hit your goal by knowing your numbers, knowing what how your life is changing with the habits that you're creating to restructure or reconstruct your identity. That is how you build your commitments. When you align your attitudes, your beliefs, and commitment towards your personal mission, you will transform your life and you will become the person that you were destined to become. I offer all these things to you with this in mind. If you're willing to accept that your success is on the other side of your setbacks, I invite you to take a look at my book, Unlimited Potential, How to Stop Living with Fear, Doubt, and Uncertainty. Now, I believe in the power of this book so much, I'm willing to give you the first three chapters uh, for free. I will give you the PDF. All you have to do is drop the word sample, S-A-M-P-L-E, sample, down in the comments, and I will get you a copy of the PDF over to you. It's going to give you an introduction, which talks about the mindset and oh, how to step break free of your cage that you may be in right now that life has put you inside of. The the chapter one is going to work walk you through defining your personal mission. What is your why and your purpose in life? Like there's two exercises in there in there for you to go through to help you get the understanding of why you're do why you want to do what you want to do in your life and how to figure out what that is. Chapter two is going to move into some other exercises on really starting to ground in the attitude and start identifying some statements of who you are. You're going to start creating a new identity and be powerful with it. There's a reason why I say to live with no doubt. There's a reason why I say that I want you to make life happen every day. These are identity statements for me. Once you have that as a guiding light for you, then you can start changing and shifting into that person that achieves that, that lives by principles and not by everyone else's ideas. I will give you that first three chapters for free of the PDF. I will send it to you. I'll just put the word sample, S-A-M-P-L-E, and I'll give you that sample of my book for free for you. I'd love to have you get that into your hands, start transforming your life today. As I promised, I was going to give you something to do that. All right, with that being said, you can be, you can do, you can have anything you want in this world. You've just got to believe. You can live a life of no doubt, just blessings, <laughs> and I will show you how. Just remember, y'all, remember this. You're only one book away from the next breakthrough in your life or in your business. So go out there and make life happen every day. God bless. I'll talk to you next time.